In this session, we're looking at analysis. We've been examining various ways of conducting future studies and exploring what may occur as a result of various trends and predictions. But beyond that, we then need to be able to analyse the results of our various examinations. And we're going to explore some of those processes. So the first concept is around what's called megatrends. Now, these are large scale trends. They tend to be global and encompass essentially the fundamental changes that are occurring. Um, so there's three main characteristics of a megatrend. The first is that it has to be significant or potent, as it's called. It needs to be a basic change, a fundamental change. The second is that it um, must have consequences in the mid range. So generally between five and 20 years or somewhat beyond. It's not just something that we already know is happening and it's something we just, um, it's part of our normal experiences. It's something that's going to happen, but it needs to be a significant major change. And the third aspect is it needs to have global consequences. So the CSIRO has developed a number of mega trends. Um, the first of these is uh, we need to get more from less. Our natural resources are diminishing and we need to develop more efficiencies around utilising um, increasingly scarce resources, be that water or metals or various other resources that we need to utilise. The fact that our habitats are disappearing, um, both flora and fauna, and the fact that that's probably going to continue. The shift from the Western Hemisphere to the Eastern Hemisphere in terms of economic potential. The trend towards increased um, longevity and age. The fact that we're increasingly living much longer and more of us are living longer than ever before. And the idea of virtuality, um, where we're increasingly using digital environments to virtualize aspects. Um, be that various business aspects, education, government, and a whole range of technological um, applications. And the final one is around expectations. We're increasingly having greater and greater expectations on what we should receive out of life in terms of our opportunities for home ownership or um, economic development. There's a range of increasing expectations so there's some fundamental mega trends that are influencing most other trends that are occurring in the world. Now the CSIRO is not the only one to develop a set of mega trends. The OECD has their own set. Uh, globalization being a major trend um, and that seemed to be increasing. Uh, digitization is another where we're increasingly doing things through interfaces with digital devices and interacting with each other and with businesses and businesses interacting with other businesses or through the digital space. And again, aging being seen as a significant trend. So those three are seen by the OECD as having the greatest impact upon all of our lives in the next 10 to 20 years. So in teams, have a look at the OECD report and think about your own personal examples from these mega trends and how they may be impacting upon your own teaching and learning. So generally these trends arise from changes and innovations. Some of them, such as some of the more negative trends um, from our exploitation and um, un lack of understanding about ecosystems and sustainability. But a lot of them have to do with our shifts in technology and in shifts in culture. Um, our different attitudes to various aspects of society um, can inform various megatrends. Uh, so globalization, demographic change, scarcity of resources, increasing mobility, and concerns about emerging technologies are again all trends that have been well identified in future study. So this leads us to the concept of drivers of change. There are various forces and um, uncertainties about the world that are 
causing these trends to occur. Um, so understanding these factors can allow us to understand these megatrends and then help influence them and change them towards more of a preferred future. Um, and we have various organizations looking at um, researching various aspects of these changes and trends, particularly around developing policies and regulations and trying to change customer demand in some instances, uh, such as around our reliance upon fossil fuels and petrol or around the consumption of meat. These are also various drivers of change that are being attempted to be influencing. But while we can have a fair bit of certainty about megatrends, there are also wild cards and shocks to the system. Um, and these can come about and upset what we expect to happen. So things such as pandemics come along relatively unexpectedly, um, although those in the know probably uh, felt that they were well expected, but for the majority of people, they were unexpected. But also there are um, shocks in terms of financial markets where we have um, recessions and depressions, um, and these are not necessarily always predicted. We also have what are called discontinuities. And these are where we have significant changes in direction from what was in the past or what was expected. So for example, the travel, travel industry was going on along quite well. Um, there were travel agencies and several travel agencies in every single shopping mall and so forth. And then along came the internet and the World Wide Web. And that shocked the whole travel agency system. And the majority of them went out of business. Likewise, there were similar trends happening around um, customer service in supermarkets at the moment, going from where we once had 30, 40 um, checkout people. Um, we now have the majority of things happening by self-checkout. Now in academia, there's a major shift happening in discontinuity around the publishing processes, particularly around journals and uh, referencing systems. And that's all being shaken up and changed at the moment. We saw a similar thing happen with um, GPS and global navigation systems. Uh, with the shift to digital um, and reliance upon um, satellite imagery and so forth. And that's now trending again into self-driving vehicles. And we also have a wide range of trends happening in social media and things like YouTube and um, Twitter and so forth that tend to um, also disrupt what was expected, often in unexpected ways. Now, to help us try to predict these trends, there's a concept of weak signals. So most of these significant changes don't necessarily presage themselves and we know for certain that they're coming. Otherwise, we'd have mechanisms in place to address them relatively easily. So a lot of experts and futurists um, examine what's happening in terms of weak signals, where there's an underlying indicators of change and often they're fantastic to see in hindsight, but it's seeing them before the change actually occurs and being able to understand that while they may not be hugely significant at the time, they have the potential to be very significant. Um, the internet was one of those big things. It was around for 10 years or so before it really had a major impact. And over time, it was increasingly evident that it was going to. But in the early days, it was very weak signals around the internet. It was mostly transferring text and um, no one had thought to be able to transfer images or have browsers and all the other things that really revolutionized the World Wide Web and the internet. So future studies tries to explore what's happening from various approaches. The first is an explorative empirical analytical approach where we look at all the accumulated knowledge and data and make um, trend analysis based upon that, those graphs and numerical um, based evidence. There's also a normative perspective approach though, where we spend time trying to imagine what might happen. Uh, what are the possible consequences? Now we don't know for certain that those will happen, but we can start thinking about, okay, 
these things could happen. What will happen if these things do happen? Then we have a communicative projective approach where we start trying to inform decision-making processes. Of course, much of future studies is fairly proactive. It's trying to actually make a better future come about. It's not just passively um, recording what occurs. It's an active process of trying to influence uh, decision-making processes so that the best possible future does emerge. And related to that is the participative creative approach where we try to involve lots of people in um, future studies so that it's not just one small group or particular interest uh, group that's making these predictions and decisions because they'll have their own biases and um, narrow perspectives on the future and are much less likely to have a be able to see those weak signals and all the different interactions that go towards predicting the future that a much more participative approach has a better likelihood of achieving. So the final method that we're looking at is the scenario method. And this is where we develop scenarios about the future based upon our trends and forecasts. And we try to frame projections about what could occur. And generally it starts with um, examining all the different aspects of the problem and problems involved, then scanning all the data and information and evidence that's um, applicable, creating various forecasts using trends um, and drivers of change and other influencing factors that we can identify, um, creating a range of foresight in terms of scenarios about what could occur into the future based upon all of our data and trends, and then often a planning and action strategy, how we can use this information now, uh, particularly coupled with things such as backcasting, to try to identify where the key um, decision points or inflection points are, so that we can try to influence what could happen towards the most preferred scenario that we can see occurring into the future. So again, in um, Teams, if you can try to think about from the mega trends that were discussed, can you see any weak signals or discontinuities that are likely to um, indicate that the predictions you're making in the scenarios you're developing are likely to occur and share those on Teams. Now, the last concept I want to uh, present is around the idea of technology roadmaps. So while mega trends and future studies is very often focused on a whole range of aspects, one aspect is around technology. And in organizations, uh, particularly because of the expense and the need to invest and develop capacity around various technologies, um, there needs to be planning put in place to develop the technologies suitable for a particular institution, such as a university or school and so forth. And these planning processes are called technology roadmaps. So in the readings, you will find three technology roadmaps for different organizations. Um, and these set out what's expected to happen in, in terms of the technologies needed by the organization into the future, where the investments should be placed around what technologies to acquire and implement and develop staff capacity and they set in place normally around about a five-year plan of what's going to then occur. And then staff in the organizations can then plan around those technological investments in developing course material and, and various other strategies and staffing strategies and all those other elements of an organization. So have a look at these um, roadmaps and think about what they might mean for in terms of your own experiences. Have, has an organization you're involved in um, got a technology roadmap? Are you aware of it? What does it indicate might be the focus of technology in the next five years? And you often find those in strategic plans or annual reports, or sometimes specific technology roadmap documents. Now, if you don't have an example, um, you can utilize the Griffith University one. And from this, 
what personal impacts will these technology roadmaps have upon yourself around these changes that will be implemented around the use of technology in the various organizations you're involved in. So that's it for this session. Um, following on from this, we're going to be starting our module on um, Delphi studies and consensus research, which has some relationship to future studies. In my own research, I have used the Delphi study approach and other consensus uh, methods to assist with futures um, research, uh, but it can also be more widely applied to other aspects of research. And we'll be exploring those over the next three sessions.